This is the presentation I will be using for this year's Career and Learning Plan program within the Year 10 group. It is, contains 20 slides and um, it's used as a way of introducing the material that we're going to cover. Um, I take the students or use this presentation at the first part of the two hour lessons that I do in the classroom. So slide one is just to demonstrate to the students with a show of hands that students will be at different parts of this decision making process. So when I ask them uh, how many students here know or have some idea about what they're going to do when they leave school, it can be quite varied but generally is about half the class. So um, it's really also to carry on with that theme, demonstrating that um, you know it's a tough decision, it takes some time to make, it takes some mental effort, some will have very clear and strong ideas about what they're going to do and some will have absolutely no idea. So regardless of the position, um, it will take some mental effort to take the next step, whether it's the first one or it's another one from the position they already hold. There are tough decisions ahead. Uh, it's, a, it's a complex and complicated process, choosing um, some direction once you leave school. Um, I will talk at that point about my own personal career story. I'll also recount some experiences I've had uh, at a careers conference some years ago. Um, which just demonstrates that um, the place you think you're going to end up when you leave school can often be quite different some years down the track. Um, and also, of course, looking at that picture with John Key, uh, the destiny of all those senior students there, and perhaps what Mr Key thought he was going to be or do once he left school as well. So um, we can talk a bit about that. Um, whether you want to or not, it's time to choose. So some students will just think, oh, I'm too young or it's not time for me now. Um, but really, within this program, I will insist that they come up with a decision based on something, not just some random um, idea that they've had. Um, but it is quite hard, and I don't agree that making not making a decision is a decision. So um, they have to overcome that. Um, and also talk about the complexity of the decision they're about to make in the world of work as it is currently uh, compared perhaps to my parents' generation where they were on a railway track, if you like, going pretty much in one direction to my generation that was more on an intersecting highway with lots of twists and turns to the type of career path that uh, this generation may follow, which is more like an off-road vehicle where they can choose to jump off the road at any stage and forge their own path. So uh, where are they going to get that big idea? Um, and we'll talk about um, uh, information gathering and um, resources that are available. Um, we'll do some brainstorming and of course um, school is heaven sent in my opinion for finding out about yourself, for helping you make decisions, for understanding where your strengths lie. Um, so I'll talk about that. And um, just reiterate that schools have a multitude of opportunities and places to get involved, to find out what you like and don't like. Um, and the next slide on that early decision-making process talks about the sorts of words that we will be using and um, getting information about and uh, researching. This next slide is a short video um, that demonstrates that big goals and big ideas all start with a single step and will take many steps to get there um, and it's a good way of um, demonstrating this concept.
Yeah, so that's just a short video to encourage students about uh, taking it one step at a time, and certainly today may be the first step for a number of them. So really, this um, process is a lot about discovering yourself, um, and a key to it all, of course, is finding your passion. So finding out, finding something that they love um, will make a big difference to their reward and satisfaction levels when it comes to work. It's an, it's idea, an idea that, that says, says that when, that when you, you put forth, forth effort, effort, you get, you get reward. reward. When you, when you throw, throw your heart and mind and soul into, into something, you get, you get something back. back. Now in my, now in my book, book, I call that notion, that belief, that, belief, that, that effort brings, brings reward, meaningful, meaningful work. And when, and when you, you look at the lives, lives of people who are really successful, what you see over and over, and over again is this idea of meaningful work is embedded in their consciousness. You know, I, you know, I, 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 I tell the story of the book of, um, of, the, of the Beatles. Beatles. Everybody knows, Everybody knows about the Beatles. They come here in 1964 and the British invasion. The most, the most interesting, interesting thing, thing about the Beatles is what happened to them before they came to America. <coughs> in uh, the 1960 and 1959, when they were just kids, they went. Uh, they were invited to go to Hamburg in Germany to be the house band at a strip club. And they went there and they stayed there for months on end. And seven days a week, they played eight-hour sets night, night after, after night in this strip club. Right? And, over and over the course of that extraordinary crucible, crucible that experience of playing, they taught, they taught themselves how to be a great band. band right? right? In fact, in fact we, know we know, we think now, now that by the time the Beatles came to America, came to America they had played, played together, together as a live band 1,200 times. We could, we could go, go to all of the clubs on Friday night in San Francisco where all the promising young bands are playing. I submit to you, you would not find a single band that has played together 1,200 times, right? This doesn't happen. So what made the Beatles special? What made them special is that they were willing to play together 1,200 times, willing to play eight-hour sets seven nights a week, four months at a stretch. And why were they willing? Because they believed in the notion of meaningful work. They had an opportunity to throw their heart and mind into something and get something back. And that made all the difference in the world. You know, I also, I interviewed Bill Gates um, for... Um, my book, my book and I was because I was really curious about, about what happened to him as a kid because, because you know he, you know, he has as many of you will know he has this extraordinary experience as a 13 year old in 1969 he goes to his school in eighth grade and they, and they have, have a teletype, teletype machine, machine hooked into a mainframe which allows, which allows him to do real-time programming, programming um, at the age of 13 in 1969. Those of, Those of you, who know, you who know your computer history will know that nobody was doing real-time programming, programming in 1969, let alone 13 year olds, right? If you, if you had access to a computer at all, you were using those, remember those clumsy old computer cards, which meant you could do one run every, you know, whatever it was, three days. He was, he was doing, doing the real, real thing, thing from the age of 13 on. And how did he respond to that opportunity? He, he threw, threw his heart and mind into it. He never, he never left, left that room, room right? He, he ran, ran up bill, computer, computer bills, bills like you would not believe, because remember, computer, computer time was incredibly expensive. He told, he told me a story that, that he, when he was in 11th grade, grade Paul, Paul Allen, Allen, who was his classmate, right, um, found, um, found, found out that there was a mainframe in the in the health center at the University of Washington that was free, wasn't being used between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. Um, um, on, uh, on, uh, on a weekday, weekday mornings. mornings. And, so and so he would go to bed, to bed at like 10 o'clock, pretend, pretend to his parents, he was getting, getting an early night, night. and, and set his alarm clock for 1.30, sneak, sneak out, you know, sneak, sneak out the window, window walk two, two miles to the University of Washington in pitch black, black and, and program from two, two until six. In fact, he told me one of the reasons he gives so much money to the University of Washington now is he feels guilty about stealing so much computer time from them. The other, the other hilarious thing is his mother, years, years later, said, you know, when she heard, heard that story for the first time, she was like, you know, you know we always wonder why it was so hard to get him out of bed in the morning. Right? Now, why, now, why does, does he do that? that? Why does why he go to some extraordinary, extraordinary those extraordinary lengths? Because, because he has the right attitude. attitude. 
Right? He was, he able, was to able to capitalize on, on his ability, not, not because, because he's, he's some genius or, or you know, I, you know, think, I think he's really, really smart. smart. Is he Einstein? I don't know. That's, That's not, not what sets him apart. apart. What, what sets him apart, apart is that he had a belief in meaningful, meaningful work. work. He was, he was willing, willing to throw his heart and mind into something because he knew he'd get something back. And, and that, that attitude, attitude is what allowed him to develop, to develop his, his, his abilities, abilities in the way, in the way that, that he did. So the next series of slides um, is just an outline of what is coming up, really. <clears throat> so I'll just go through those pretty quickly. Various pages about me. My goals. Uh, to reach my goals, reality check and subject choices. And the final page, which is the review, where I interview the student and go through their plan. So let's get started. Complete the plan in two lessons online CV and review their work with me. So now it's time to work. First section is about me. <coughs> we start with interests. And I prompt them with some ideas of the sorts of things they do during their weekends and on their holidays. Watching TV, computer games, fishing, building things, hanging with their friends, playing sport, music. Next section is skills. It's often poorly done because the students just don't understand that they actually have skills and they fit under various categories if they search hard enough. Practical skills, people skills, information skills, these are some practical skills. I talk about the examples that are shown here, and then I just list a few other people skills that also qualify as skills that have value. Information skills. And I, <coughs> I let them choose um, from that list, but of course they can add to that from their own thinking as well. Achievements. Some ideas here again. Last one on this page is values. And I'll just cover off two categories here, personal values. And work values. So they can start to think that they need to marry their personal values with their work values. And some of the things, despite having perhaps having no particular job in mind, but these are the, some of the things that they would consider as important when doing a career search. This is Zach, this is Zach with Pursue the Passion. The passion. One, of the one of the most challenging aspects, aspects of choosing a career is simply determining where our interests lie. Now one common, now one common characteristic we saw in the majority of people we interviewed was a powerful, was a powerful connection with, with the childhood interest. 
For me, part of the reason why I work here is when I was five years old, growing up in Boston, I went to the New England Aquarium, and I picked up a horseshoe crab, and I touched a horseshoe crab. I still remember that, and I'm still, you know, I love, uh, you know, those types of engaging experiences that really register with you and stick with you as a child. And my grandfather was a forester. My childhood my childhood playground was 3,600 acres of trees and wildlife that he introduced them. So my so my entire childhood was in wildlife and in wild, and in wild places. It just clicked. When I was a kid, I was a all, kid the all the cousins would uh, use, my use my grandparents' driveway and garage as, as, a, uh, as a stage. And use the garage door to cook and put on, put on shows for uh, all the family every weekend. Every weekend. I got to uh, kind of be the director and help you know, put the show together and then see the results. And I think really there's as much of that in driving what I do today as there is. Sports. Sports. My parents got divorced when I was 13, and, and uh, they sent me, they sent me, they forced me to go to the therapist, and for about a month I was totally against, totally against it. And I was, like, and I was like, wait a minute, this like this person's totally objective, objective. Like, and, uh, like, and uh, they're just listening. Just listening. I was like, you can actually, actually do this for a living, and I was like, I was like, that's where it all starts. I started drawing, start drawing like shoes like in the seventh grade. On like little, on like little, little three, by you know, three by five, five index, index cards. cards. And my teacher, and my teacher, name was Mrs. Weather. Weather. She, she, used she used to keep them. Um, and I used to actually, um, used to actually get in trouble because I was drawing, cause I was drawing instead, of instead of like paying attention. But, but I've been drawing, I've been drawing ever, since ever since I can remember. So I, so I, I just had a gift to be able to draw anything I could see. That's where you always start. What do you like to do? And and I used to we have woods behind our house and I spend a lot of time out there. And I said, well, the only thing I know for sure is I like to be outside. She thought a minute. She thought a minute. Like, she's like, "Well, we all well, like, we to, all do like to do that. You just have to get over, have to get over it." it. And, and so, I decided, so I decided to go into, go into information, information systems, systems, which ended up being the county. county. And, and so I sat, so I sat in an office, office for years, trying to, trying to figure out how to get out. Outside. Outside. <laughs> 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 and and then, eventually, then eventually, I just decided I needed to be outside because what your passion is when you're 15 is more than likely going to be your passion when you're 30. I envisioned myself having this job. To be in a tattoo artist when I was a teenager, when I first started doing it. When I was 13 and hand over the very first dot on my wrist, I wiped it away and saw that there was a dot. I knew that's what I wanted to do. If you can really, you can think, really think back honestly about, about what experiences kind of led you to where you are, for thick influences, for thick influences on almost always from your childhood or early you know, teen years, that really you really found something, something that you were, you were drawn either drawn to or incredibly interested in or got great joy from. Uh, and, uh, and you know, if you're, you know, able, if you're able, able to be lucky enough to parlay that, that into, into your career, career you're almost inevitably going to be successful. So that slide uh, leads us into setting some goals, um, and they've already done their career goals through the career quest on the online career quest. So we spend a bit of time talking about that, but not too much, and then we go into um, learning and personal goals, and I give them some ideas as to what they might be. These are just ones that I see often from students and over the years, and it just prompts them to come up with some ideas and uh, to think along these lines regarding personal and learning goals. Today we're going, Today to, learn we're going to learn about making a smart, a smart goal. goal. To make a smart, to make a smart goal, you want to pick something specific, and I want, and to, be I want to, to be able to do push-ups. My smart goal, my smart goal needs to be measurable, which measurable, which means how many push-ups can, can I do? I'm going to, I'm do, going to do 20 push-ups. Push the next question, the next I, have question I have is, is my goal attainable, attainable or, am I, or am I capable of doing 20 push-ups? Push and I think I can. The next question, the next question is, 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 my goal is, is my goal results based or can I chart my progress and I will show you in a minute how I plan to do that. The last question, the last about, question my about my smart goal is, goal is how much time will I give myself to reach my smart goal? goal. I'm, going to, I'm going to give myself three months to get to 20 push-ups. Push the first thing, the I, first thing I need to do is get a baseline. So let's see how many push-ups I can do. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
So I'll take so I'll take results, results graph, and I'll chart, and I'll chart number the number that I did, that which, I did six, which is six on day one, on day one and, I'll and I'll write six, six over twenty to the right of that. Now six is now six nowhere, is nowhere where, where I want to be, so, want to I've, be. Got to so I've got to make a commitment to start working out and working out really hard. Remember, remember, hard work, hard work pays, pays off, and the more you, and the work, more you work at reaching your goal, reaching your goal the, better your the better your chances are at reaching, are at reaching that, goal. that goal. So you've got to make, so you've got to make sure, sure that you're spending all of your time focused, focused on, reaching on reaching that goal. Now it's time now to try again. Let's see what I can do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Eight, nine, nine, ten, ten, eleven, eleven, twelve, thirteen, thirteen, fourteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Sixteen. All right. All right. Really That's good. really good. So I'm gonna put that. So I'm gonna put that down on my results graph. And looks like I'm, and looks making, like great I'm making great progress, progress on reaching my smart goal. We need to realize, need to realize that, there that there are good and days and bad days when we're trying to, reach, we're trying our to reach our smart goal. Here's an example, Here's an example of a bad day in trying to reach, trying our, to reach our smart goal. Come on, push Here come on push-ups. One, two, One, two three, 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 four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, nine, ten, ten eleven, eleven, and, and twelve. Today, Today I went down by four, by four and five. I'm really upset, I'm really upset with myself because I should have kept my sixteen. So I need to realize. I realize that when I go down to my smart goals, it's time to get, it's time to, work. get to work. So I have to get, so I have back, to get into back into my regiment of working out, of working, out working hard, working hard committing, committing to my smart to my goal, goal, and doing all and the things, all that, I things that I need to do to reach that, to reach smart, that smart goal. It's going to take, it's gonna a, lot take a lot of hard work. work. It's going to take it's a lot of commitment. And most importantly, it's going to take a lot of my attitude to commit to not giving up on my smart goal. Now that I've been now that I've been working hard, hard it's time to, time to again. test again. Let's go one, Let's go. Two, one two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, nine, ten, ten, eleven, eleven, twelve, twelve, thirteen, thirteen, fourteen, fourteen, fourteen fifteen, fifteen, sixteen. Sixteen. All right. I'm back, back to sixteen again. again. I haven't reached my I haven't smart, reached goal, smart goal, but I went back up, back up and I'm really proud of really myself. Proud of myself. But, if I keep but if I keep working hard, I know that I'm gonna, that I'm gonna reach my smart goal. Let's see what happens. Next. Here we go. Here we go. One, two, One, two three, three, four, five, four, five, five six, six, seven, eight, eight nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I went crazy. I went crazy. And guess what? And guess I reached my, my, reach my smart goal. And that's because, and that's because I committed to my plan. I stuck with my plan. I worked hard. I charted my progress. And I did everything I could. And my goal is reached. So this is how you reach your smart goal. And that's a rather simplistic view of SMART goals, but I think it quite adequately outlines the process and um, what each letter stands for and how to go about reaching a SMART goal. So I use that as a precursor to putting some dates uh, and some uh, step steps in place towards the, their long-term goals. And here are some examples. So that's the last slide. Um, at this point, once we've set our goals, um, we look at subject choices and I bring out a sheet, an overview sheet, one page of all the subject choices and we spend uh, 10 or 15 minutes and I normally have the other teacher in the class at this point as well where we work with the students um, as best we can making sure that they plot and put down their subject choices from years 11, 12 and 13. And that's it. Thank you.